G'day, Sticks here. I uh, just thought I'd provide an update video on what's been going on. Um, I did the uh, uh, my first impressions of the Optimum uh, BF20L mill some time ago. Um, just thought I'd like to say it's been treating me well. I've done a few projects on it now, still learning what I'm doing. Uh, but what I've done in the meantime, um, because of a few things that I noticed, is uh, fix up all the, uh, the gib adjustments. Everything seemed to be a bit loose out of the box. I did a, a quick adjustment when I first got the item, um, but I didn't know what I was doing then. I know slightly more about what I'm doing now, but still not a great deal. But everything's been tightened up since, and it seems to be um, giving me a reasonable surface finish, even with uh, these, oh, this, this set of Alcock um, uh, high-speed steel end mills. Uh, I actually, I'm not sure what, oh, there you go, M M2 high-speed steel. Um, they seem to be doing a good job. I haven't worn any of them out yet or burned any of them out yet. Um, I did make mention in the initial video that some of these had some, um, some nicks uh, along the cutting edges. Um, and unfortunately, it wasn't just cosmetic. Uh, they are leaving very, very slight uh, lines in some of the, the side milling finishes. But I'm quite prepared to deal with that. The other thing that I've noticed with this guy is uh, having bought a vice which is 130, 135 mil across. So whatever that translates to in the in the vertex lineup, um, bigger is better until it's too big. And this guy is slightly too big. I'm still able to make use of most of the the table travel. I'm starting to max out when I bring the uh, the Y direction all the way back, but I'm still well beyond uh, spindle center, so that's no massive dramas. The only issue I have is when we've got the table centered, table centered, um, the vice tends to get in the way of the, the Y hand wheel, which is an annoyance, because I can't really get in there to see the graduations on the wheel. Uh, this, this, um, the graduated uh, dial is quite tight at the moment as well, so I need to get in there and fix that up. I did that some time ago um, because the, the bore on that uh, that graduated dial was a bit tight, so I got some emery in there on a, on a bit, of, uh, bit of dowel in the drill. Um, I took a little bit of material out of there. It improved it, but it's still a bit too tight. Otherwise, the issues that I mentioned I had with the, uh, the Quill DRO, which doesn't have a battery in there at the moment because it went flat, uh, the issues that I have with that being uh, not quite right, a bit inaccurate, is solely because uh, solely because uh, this, the uh, the moving element there on it wasn't tight, so that was that was flapping in the breeze. So it, it's come good since then. A uh, bit of adjustment on the uh, <laughs> a number of occasions I've had to adjust the the tram on the head. Uh, because small mill, I was doing pretty aggressive climb cuts because I don't know what I'm doing, um, and it's pulled the table back, backlash out. Uh, the the end mill has grabbed onto the work. I was doing seal at the time, but it's grabbed onto the work. Um, it's bound up and it's thrown that thrown the head out of tram. Um, but I've I've worked around that by retramming it, um, and now again I know a small amount more about what it is that I'm meant to be doing with some of these operations. So more and more happy with with the purchase for it's not it's not a super cheap mill it's not the cheapest uh but even for the stuff that i'm doing um i'm happy with it I've, i'm yet to max it out if you will i don't think i will if i max it out i'm obviously being too aggressive with it current project is uh having a quick look at calibrating uh the lathe that i've got uh, it's an al320g because uh, the Hafco Metal Master is what's realistically readily available around here uh, in Perth where I am. Having recently watched a video on uh, Maddie's workshop, his channel, um, I think he put up a video a couple of months ago. He was cleaning out uh, his lathe and I believe it was a Hafco, I'm not sure what model it was, um, but he was cleaning it out and in some of the castings, particularly in the, um, in the transmission area um, and some of the other areas, yeah, it was full of uh, casting sand and shit and just un general unpleasantness. So I thought I'd give my lay the quick go over, um, address some problem areas that I've identified um, and try and get things running a bit nicer so I can 
uh, do some heavier stuff with it. I don't need to, but it, the motor has the capability. Realistically, it should have the rigidity to be taking some more aggressive cuts than what I'm doing. I am using carbide tooling. Uh, I am using, uh, I recently got a, a quick change tool post. Um, I am using uh, carbide tooling. Um, and with the inserts that I've got, they dislike, they really actually dislike uh, gentle cuts. Um, so I want as much rigidity as I can get out of this so I can take reasonable cuts for a reasonable surface finish. So what am I doing with this? Um, I've dissembled the, uh, the complete tool carriage component. Uh, so I can get in there. Um, I wanted to address a couple of things on the carriage. Uh, one of the chief issues that I was having was the, uh, the detent for the power feed or the power travel um, in the X and Y. Or whatever the two axes are on a lathe. It, it says in there, whatever. Um, but the detent was too soft. Um, so there was a couple of times there where taking it out of a X left right um, treble, um, I was going straight past the neutral zone and into the, the Y or Z or forward back travel. Um, three axes is too many for me to remember on a lathe. Um, so anyway, I was, I was cruising straight past that neutral detent into the other direction and crashing the tool, which obviously is not something you want to be doing. Um, so having a quick look at that, um, obviously very, very simple adjustment. Just got a, a, a ball detent in this guy here. Um, I wanted to see if I could, uh, no, I mean, there's a, there's a bit of up down slap in this guy as well, which is an annoyance at worst. Um, if I could address it, I was going to, but it looks as though I don't have any room for adjustment in there. So I'll leave him be. Um, but I wanted to see if I could uh, also get in there and see if I could uh, improve some of the lubrication points. Um, at, the mo at the moment, it's kind of a case of just, they these aren't particularly fast moving gears, uh, but at the, at the moment it's a case of uh, getting some, some grease just up underneath and letting it work itself into the teeth of the gears there. I believe that's something I'll have to just continue doing. Um, as I said, they're not particularly fast moving gears, so it's probably not too much a drama. Uh, the other issue that I was having was, uh, for a start, these ball oilers are garbage. A um, couple of times now, there's been one in the chuck there, and obviously one on the, um, on the travel there. Um, as soon as they get a little bit of junk in there, or the spring buckles and the ball stays down, and yeah, good opportunity to get swarf and shit in there. Um, I might invert this guy. Uh, take off the cross feed um, and knock the junk out of this. Uh, ball oiler yet yeah. uh, I, I may do it I may not I'm, I'm not too not overly concerned um, otherwise in terms of the ways I don't have way wipers on this yet I'll probably put them in at some point um, but the only two oiling points are either oil directly onto the ways um, or using these ball oilers here there's only two of them one for each side of the bed um, there's not much uh, volume there's not much capacity uh, in the channel here, so it tends to either ooze straight out or leak out the sides. And it doesn't actually contain oil. Way wipers might improve that. Um, I'll do a bit of investigation. As I said, I don't know what I'm doing, so everything that I do, do, needs a bit of research as to whether it's gonna be worth it or not. Uh, otherwise, all I'm doing is just uh, currently adjusting the gibs on the back here. Um, I have noticed uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but I have noticed in just general use, very, very slight scoring um, along the ways in the bed there, um, which was curious to me because I, I normally keep this over-oiled rather than under-oiled. Um, I can only assume uh, that it's got a bit of shit under um, one of the running surfaces there, and that's contributed to that. But I thought pulling this apart would give me a good opportunity to give it a, a bit of a deep clean um, on the, the gibs um, and the gib holders uh, just uh, take off some of the sharp edges of the file there and I'm about to start reassembling um, otherwise uh, sorry I'll just move you around there uh, I'm just trying to find the part that I've taken off what I did do was install a quick change tool post oh there we are over there um, looking at the appropriate quick change tool posts from Heron Forbes this guy here, I'll need to look at the parts catalogue. Um, this guy here was correct for the uh, for the tools that I'm using. Uh, the, the one size smaller wasn't going to fit. I did still need to make up a threaded stud here. 
So I threaded start out of a, a piece of half a piece of half shaft, um, which was interesting. I'm not sure what, what sort of steel it was, but it was case hardened with a through hardened area in the middle. Uh, so it was throwing off some, some pretty hot chips there. Uh, but I got it made and it holds down tight. Um, and with a little bit of, for any machinist, this is this is nothing. Um, just a piece of threaded rod with a uh, an enlarged section on the bottom, uh, just for location with a, a key slot down the bottom. Uh, I've mounted him, that took me a little bit, but uh, the end product or the end result was that I was able to get these quick change tool posts mounted and I'm happy with that so far. Had no dramas and it's certainly a hell of a lot more convenient than using the, the four-way rotating tool post which came with the thing which always needed shims, um, specified as a 16mm tool height but it still always needed shims um, which was an annoyance. But yeah, that's what I've been doing, um, that's what I'm doing at the moment. So this hopefully will come good. I just got the indicator on there. Um, it moves pretty, <laughs> moves pretty nicely at the moment. Um, and I'm just trying to adjust it up so I get a minimal movement up down on the back here, uh, while still keeping free movement of the carriage left right. So thanks for watching. Just that very small update. Uh, when I get get around to it, I hope to uh, create some videos on some of the shit that I'm actually making. Um, and anybody that uh, makes stuff and puts it on YouTube already knows that it's actually quite a chore to do. Um, so I'm just trying to get myself over that motivational hurdle of taking all the video, putting it together, trying to cut out all the shit which uh, provides me with some self-embarrassment and then throw it up online. So thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll put up some more material for you soon. Cheers.